Good morning, everyone, and welcome to First Five. I'm Pastor Steve, and my goal today is to help you get your day off to a great start. The way we do that here on First Five is by spending some time together in the Word of God and in prayer. And so, if you've been with us, you know that every morning I invite you to read one chapter of Scripture. Together, chapter by chapter, we're working our way through various books of the New Testament. We've even spent a little bit of time in some books of the Old Testament. Now, today, at this time, we're working our way through Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. And uh, every day we're reading one chapter, and today we come to chapter 5. And so my invitation to you would be to read the whole of chapter 5 when we're all done in a lesson. But for the purpose of this little teaching moment, we're going to look at just a portion of the chapter. In fact, that portion comes to the very end. We'll be looking at verses 16 through 21. So, if you want to grab the Bible, or if you want to look it up on your phone, I invite you to join me in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. And here the Apostle Paul writes to the church of Corinth. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone and the new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Good, good stuff. I do hope you'll take the time to read the whole chapter. But here in this final paragraph, we actually see two fairly important concepts, kind of biblical, theological concepts that we want to understand as we read through it. The first is this concept of the new creation. Paul says of us, not only here, but in other passages that he writes, that in Christ we are new creations. The old is gone, and the new has come. What does he mean by that exactly? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever known someone, let's just say, they're a complete couch potato, right? They, they eat junk food and they sit on their couch and they really don't do much of anything much of the time, right? I mean, you've probably known people like that, just not terribly active, just pretty content to just sit and, and watch things, maybe even watch sports, but not play them, right? And then you haven't seen them for a little while, and one day you run into them, and they're looking great. They're fit, right? They're active. They're telling you about some of the things they're doing. They're energetic, right? What do we usually say about a person like that? We say, you're like a new person. Well, when Christ comes into our lives, we go through a dramatic transformation, inwardly, spiritually, emotionally. We are changed from the inside out. We become, as Paul describes it, a new creation in Christ. Then he goes on from there, and he begins to talk about reconciliation. You probably have heard that word before. You may even understand it. You know what it means to, to be reconciled. Uh, usually, particularly if we're talking about people, right? It is to come back into relationship 
when someone has been separated or estranged from another. And so when a broken relationship is restored, it is said that those people were reconciled. Now, when it comes to our relationship with God, we are reconciled through Christ. This is what Paul is telling us. We are restored to a right relationship with God. And, Paul says, not only are we reconciled ourselves, but we now have a ministry of reconciliation. In other words, having been reconciled, we are now called to help others become reconciled to God through Christ. In fact, in this passage, Paul describes us as Christ's ambassadors, God making his appeal through Christ. Us. Now, on the surface, it feels like these are two separate trains of thought, right? The new creation and reconciliation. But in fact, the two are virtually inseparable. It is because we have become a new creation in Christ, transformed by his blood, that we can be reconciled to God. Christ made that reconciliation possible. Because when we become new in Christ, He takes away our sins. This is what Paul was describing in that passage. Those things in our lives that separate us from God. And we are able to be reconciled, restored to a right relationship because we no longer have that barrier of sin. Thanks be to God that we are new creations and in so we are reconciled through Christ. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, I thank you for this important teaching. It reminds us of a couple of really key concepts in our faith life. The first is that we are made new in Christ. We are new creations in Him, Lord. And we are thankful for the transformational work that takes place inside of us because of Jesus. And having been made new in Christ, we can now be reconciled to you. The sin that once separated us from you, Christ has covered by his sacrifice at the cross. And, and as he has transformed us into new creations, we can now uh, reconnect to you. We can now be restored to that right relationship with you. And we thank God. We thank you, Lord, for that reconciliation. What a beautiful and joyful gift. In Jesus' holy name, amen. All right, everyone, have a wonderful day, and I will talk to you tomorrow. God bless.